next one is uh, North America. So contrary to the common understanding that North America only includes uh, Canada and United States and Mexico, but actually um, the North America extends up to the border of the Panama Canal. Okay. Uh, Central American countries, the smaller states, and some of the most diverse habitats can be found in North America. Some of the most diverse habitats can be found in North America. From the Aleutian Islands to the Isthmus of Panama, North America is made up of 23 countries and is the third largest continent mountain ranges in the west, including the Rocky Mountains in the United States and the Sierra Madre mountain range in Mexico. You'll find the Great Plains of the United States States and Canada. These grasslands make up the largest biome in North America. Further north, you'll find the Canadian Shield, a hilly region of lakes and swamps that stretches across northern Canada with rocks that are one billion years old. The eastern regions of North America contain everything from mountains to wetlands, including the Florida Everglades, a diverse ecosystem, home to over 20 rare, endangered, and threatened species. And if you're looking for fun in the sun, head to the Caribbean, home to islands, islets, reefs, and caves with more than 44 million people. Even further south is Central America, which has some of the most beautiful rainforests and exotic animals, like the poison dart frog, ocelot, tapir, capuchin monkey, and jaguar. With so many diverse ecosystems, there are a variety of animals that live throughout North America. Bison, scorpions, pronghorn, armadillos, groundhogs, crocodiles, black bears, great white sharks, and the American bald eagle. The first North Americans are believed to have migrated from Northeast Asia. Today, there are more than 360 million people living in 23 different countries. The most populated metropolitan area in North America is Mexico City, home to over 21 million people. Death Valley in the United States is North America's hottest, driest, and lowest point. It's 282 feet below sea level, has a record high 134 degrees Fahrenheit, and gets fewer than 5 centimeters of rain a year. If the Death Valley is too dry for you, then check out Lake Superior in Michigan. It's the world's largest freshwater lake. There are so many awesome places to visit in North America like the Grand Canyon in the United States, Chichen Itza in Mexico, and Niagara Falls in Canada and the United States. With environments and wildlife as diverse as its population, there's no place quite as unique as North America. Okay, so that's uh, North America. As I was saying earlier, you know, North America extends to the islands of the Caribbeans. Yeah, means I'm <coughs> confusing the term na Latin America because we're only limiting it or we're only limiting or we're uh, referring Latin America to South America and all the other uh, Latin speaking or Spanish speaking states in or countries in South America. So again, North America officially is composed of 23 sovereign states. Of course, the most visited ones include United States. There we have Canada, Mexico. Okay, Cuba as well, it may sound uh, restricting, it's kind of because it's a uh, communist country, but also Cuba is well visited. And of course, the Caribbeans, particularly the Bahamas. Okay, then next on the line is Oceania. We formerly call this as the continent of Australia. So this particular continent uh, is composed of 14 sovereign states. Of course, the most uh, frequented ones are um, Australia, okay, nandiyan din ang uh, New Zealand. Of course, in the Pacific, Palau, okay, we have a direct connection to Palau. 
for uh, Fiji, Guam as well is in the part of Oceania, although that's the territory of the United States. So there are other smaller island states in Oceania, but they are not much visited because also of the distance, the limitation of flights, and other factors. Okay, the next one is the South American continent. If you're looking for culture as exciting as its landscape, then take a look at South America. It's home to the largest rainforest in the world, the Amazon rainforest. It covers over 2 million square miles. That's a lot of trees. And its thick vegetation makes more than 20% of the world's oxygen. Snaking through the rainforest is the Amazon River, the largest river in the world. Surrounding this incredible river is a rich ecosystem full of life. About 40,000 plant and species. 1,300 bird species. 3,000 types of fish. 430 species of mammals and two and a half million different species of insects. The Amazon River is the second longest river in the world and travels almost 4,000 miles. That's the distance from New York to Rome. The largest country in South America is Brazil. It covers almost half of the continent. One of the smallest countries in South America is Ecuador. What it lacks in size, it makes up for in natural beauty. Ecuador has over 4,000 species of orchids, making it the orchid capital of the world. You won't find any flowers in Chile's Atacama Desert, though. It's considered the driest place on Earth. The air here is so dry, there are hardly any clouds, making it one of the best places to stargaze. For more stunning views, check out Angel Falls in Venezuela, the world's highest uninterrupted waterfall. If you prefer your water frozen, head south to see the southern ice fields of Torres del Paine National Park in Chile. Here, you can join over 100,000 visitors a year exploring the mountain peaks and glaciers, full of wildlife, natural wonders, and culture. There's no place quite as extraordinary as South America. All right, so that's uh, South America. Yeah, so officially, South America is composed of just 12 sovereign states. Okay, um, and the most frequented ones are first Brazil, Colombia, Chile, Peru, and Argentina. Okay. So the last continent is, uh, of course, Antarctica. Okay. Um, Antarctica can be visited with a ship or a boat. Okay, and the jump on point for visitation to Africa or Antarctica rather is through Argentina. Okay. Now moving on, we also have these countries that we call the transcontinentals. Okay, mga trans. Okay, when we say transcontinentals, these are countries that are located in two or more continents or uh, they are contiguously, uh, tuloy-tuloy, okay? With exception dito yung mga countries na may dependencies overseas, like like United Kingdom, meron silang dependencies out in Africa, okay? Except hindi sila kasama nito. So what we're referring is yung mga countries with a contiguous land are located in two or both continents, like Russia. Okay, geographically, Russia is in Asia. However, politically, culturally, it's in um, Europe. So for the most of the population of, or majority of the population of Russia is already on the European side because the larger cities are on the European side. There's Berg, Moscow. Yeah. Also, we also have Turkey, it's transcontinental as well, located both Asia and Europe. 
Okay? Before, uh, sa old airport ng Turkey, that one is in the Asian side. Ngayon, yung bago ng airport ng Turkey, sa so Istanbul, is in the European side. Now, we also have Cyprus. Geographically, it's located in Asia, but politically, it's in Europe. Okay? It's actually a member of the European Union. And we also have Armenia, uh, Kazakhstan, although they are acknowledged geographically as part of Asia, but uh, on their culture, um, you can see more of the European culture in this country. Egypt as well. Um, a part of Egypt is in the Asian continent, but for the most part of Egypt, nandutuwa na siya sa European or African continent. Now, it's also a common practice in destination or tourism geography to, to divide Asia in several regions because since it's a huge one, it's a vast continent, no mas madaling intindihin ang Asia if it's divided into various regions. So we're following six here. We have North Asia, East Asia Central, Western, South, and Southeast Asia. So North Asia refers to the uh, part of Russia that is geographically located in Asia. So that's 70% of Russia Russia is in Asia, and that's the North Asia. Also, uh, next one, East Asia includes countries just above the Philippines, no? Mongolia, Japan, North and South Korea, China, of course, and the administrative regions of Hong Kong and Macau. Also, Taiwan is in, in East Asia. However, Taiwan is not recognized as a sovereign state by the United Nations, but it actually uh, plays as, or it acts as a sovereign one. Now, the next one is Central Asia. So, hindi masyado puntahan ang Central Asia. And that includes Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Afghanistan. So, if I had it right, um, I have it right, or visa free in Kazakhstan. Or visa for the, e visa for the matter. Now, Western Asia, yan, ito yung uh, commonly referred as the Middle East. So, and the, ito yung mga a country's member of the Gulf states, of course, nandiyan ang Qatar, nandiyan ang Turkey, ang nandiyan ang UAE. Now, Southeast Asia, it includes or the, uh, what commonly called as the sub-Indian continent. Of course, nandiyan ang, ang Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, and Maldives. So, for South Asia, okay, uh, ang most frequented dito is India, Nepal, and Sri Lanka, and they call it uh, most travelers, they call it the Grand Slam South Asia. Okay. For Southeast Asia naman, of course, um, nandyan, ang, nandyan tayo along with our neighbor state or other members of ASEAN. Okay. Of course, Timor-Leste is there as well, but officially not a member of ASEAN yet, but it is in the Southeast Asian region. Okay, now for the world oceans, okay, why we need to understand world oceans for us also to, to have understanding, particularly when we are discussing flights, para malaman din natin kung saan siya tatawid, or ano yung mga surrounding bodies of water na nakapalimit sa isang bansa, we can, we can give an advice as to which uh, country is best for coastal beach tourism. So, we can see that they, the borders know which one are facing a certain ocean or body of water. So, we have Pacific Ocean, we have Atlantic Ocean in between the Americas and the uh, European and African continent. On top of Europe, we have the Arctic Ocean. Then we also have the Indian continent lying below the, um, the, the India and, of course, in between Africa and Oceania. And, of course, on top of or within or near Antarctica is the Southern Ocean. Okay, so... Those are the world oceans. Now let's talk about climate. Now, climate refers to the weather conditions prevailing in an area in general or over a long period of time. So most of the time we, we use terms interchangeably as climate, weather, and season. Okay, but these three terms are different from each other. Okay, we'll define them in a while. Now climate, for climate, we have four major climate zones in the world. First one, of course, is the polar zone for the Arctic climate. This is a very cold and very dry year-round. During winter, it's totally dark. Okay? During summer, naman, continues on daylight. So countries in the Arctic zone include some parts of the United States, then Canada, uh, Denmark because of uh, Greenland, then uh, Norway, Finland, Sweden, Iceland, and Russia. Yung kanilang mga island dependencies na nasa Arctic zone. Of course, Antarctica is in Arctic zone. The second uh, 
zone is the temperate zone which has cold winters and mild summers no ito yung mga bansa na may four distinct seasons ito yung may winter spring summer fall so uh, most parts of canada and the mainland united states are in the temperate zone area of course in east asia some parts of china then japan the korean peninsula Mexico and North America, also in New Zealand, are in the temperate zone. Okay, now for the subtropical areas, okay, or zone, or the desert, desert zone, it's dry here and hot all year, and the climate is quite constant. But if you, you can see now, no, probably due to climate change, may mga napapabalitang ulan na rin pagbaha sa, sa Middle East, even some snow sometimes. So most part, or some parts of China are in the subtropical area, and most of the Middle East. And of course, the last one is the tropical zone because it's hot and wet all year here. We only have short rainy seasons. And most countries in Southeast Asia or Southeast Asia rather is in the tropical zone along with India as well as Brazil. Okay, so why do we need to understand climate as well? So we can give proper advice to the clients whenever they're visiting a particular destination as to what clothes are they going to prepare. Yung mga uh, accessories that they need to have, umbrellas, or coat, or whatever. Now, also, we can use climate as part of our when when planning or a marketing strategy. You know, like um, you sell tropical destinations to those people who are in uh, in Arctic zone or in temperate zone, in vice and, and vice versa. You know? um, I have this uh, experience you know, when we visited Hainan in China. Okay, Hainan is a part of China, but it's already on the tropical zone. It's a bit init na. So, we, I visited Hainan with a group. Okay, yung mga unang beses pa lang siya promote. And we have somebody in the group who bought with her some win uh, a lot of winter clothes. Since notion niya, China, malamig, yung mga dala siyang winter clothes. Because we were not uh, properly advised by that time. Okay, as to what is the temperature or climate in China or the weather in that particular part of China. So, ito na nga po yung sinasabi ko kanina. We have three terms with regards to conditions. We have climate, the weather, and season. So, when we say climate, it's the general condition year-round, the average condition year-round. So, yun na nga yung Arctic, tropical, subtropical, temperate. When we say weather, it's the day-to-day -day condition. Like, is it rainy today? Is it sunny today? Is it cloudy today? No, that's the weather. So, um, nowadays, na, 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 nakakapagbigay na ng forecast as to what will be the weather for the next few days. So, siguro, when we have people traveling you know, or visiting a particular destination, we can uh, see then, na matignan din natin kung ano yung uh, weather, that time, ano yung, yung, yung forecast for the following day so that they can prepare as well. And the third one is the uh, season. Okay. Ito naman, yung season naman is an average condition for a certain period of time. Uh, condition for three months, three month condition, or a two month condition, or a month, one month condition. Huh? So that's season. Okay. That's something. Check. Okay. Yeah. Now let's talk about time zone. Yeah, time zone. Now time zone naman refers to the uh, region of the world that observes a uniform standard time legal commercial and social process. So there are 24 time zones in the world. So time zones, they tend to follow uh, boundaries of countries and subdivisions instead of strictly following longitudinal or long, uh, longitude for convenience. Although technically, time zones are divided by longitude, but uh, nga, they, countries prefer to follow their borders as to determining their time zone. So in determining time, um, in the world, we're, we're encountering two distinct terms here, the GMT and the BC. So GMT is the Greenwich Meridian Time, or the BC is the Universal Coordinate Time. Okay, so GMT is the zone, while UTC 
is the standard time. Okay, so let's say Philippines is in GMT plus 8 so, and the standard time right now is 11. That's the PST or Philippine standard time. Okay, now most time zones on land, they are expressed in full number of hours, but there are some few countries or few zones that are offset by 30 or 45 minutes. Kagaya ng Nepal, it's plus 5.35, India, plus 5.30 minutes, and Myanmar, plus 6.30 minutes. So, ito yung time zone of the world. No? Kung makikita ninyo, yung mga linya pa baba, they are not straight lines. Okay? Because yung nasabi ko, they are adjusted depending dun sa, uh, dun, dun sa territory or boundary ng isang country. Now, there's this think case here with China. China is very expansive. Actually, it occupies actually, it occupies three time zones. So, here is China. Okay, it occupies three time zones. Okay, however, China is just following one. It is GMT plus eight. Kagaya po natin, Beijing time. Which means, if you are on the Beijing area, okay, and compare it to the one on the on on the uh, western side of China, paras lang sila ng oras. Kaya kung kung um, alas ocho na ng gabi sa Beijing, okay, yung alas ocho nila doon sa western side of China, one pa. Okay, so it's kind of confusing ang oras when you are on different parts of China. Okay. And unlike the United States, merong Pacific time, Eastern time, my Central time. Okay? It's clear. We just clear the drawings. Okay. Now, let's move on to time difference identification. While we can just easily Google this one, but it's also great to have an idea how time difference is being computed. Okay, so ang basis po natin, ang reference po natin for time difference computation is the prime meridian. So prime meridian is GMT plus zero. No, right, of prime meridian. So ang prime meridian pala is located somewhere in in, uh, in London, pababa. So on the western side of prime meridian, it's the minus side, or GMT minus. And on the eastern side of primary region, it's the GMT plus side, kung saan tayo nandito. Itong number na nakakita ninyo, katabi ng symbol, say GMT plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, ibig sabihin niyan, you are uh, 4 hours ahead of primary region, is plus. Now, let's say, uh, Philippines, GMT plus 8. So you are 8 hours ahead of primary region. Okay, what if your GMT minus 4? Minus naman, you are behind. So let's say GMT minus 4, you are 4 hours behind. Okay? So how we determine time difference? If you are, or if two countries or destinations are located on the same region, we will subtract the values, regardless ng symbol. No, we will not follow the algebra here. So again, if you are located on the same side of the region, regardless of the symbol, you will subtract the values. So let's say parehas na nasa GMT plus side, nasa eastern side. So say GMT plus 5, GMT plus 8. So isu subtract daw natin yung values. So that's 8 minus 5, 3. So the time difference is 3. Say naman, your eastern side, if it is GMT uh, minus 6 and GMT minus 4. So you will just subtract the value. 6 minus 4. 2 hours. Now, what if two destinations are located on an opposite side? Yung isa nasa GMT plus side, yung isa nasa GMT minus side. You will add the values. No? Let's say one destination is on GMT plus 5, uh, plus 5 zone and the other one is GMT minus 5 zone. So, i-add lang daw natin. So, that's 5 plus 5, 10. The time difference between the two countries is 10. So, let's have a specific example here. Let's see the time difference between Manila and Tokyo. So, Manila is GMT plus 8, Tokyo is GMT plus 9. So, ang sabi ng rule natin, if they have the same sign or they are on the same side, 
we will subtract. So that's eight, 9 minus 8, 1 hour. So who, how are we going to determine sino ang ahead, sino ang behind? Kung sino yung mas mataas ang value, sila yung ahead. Kung sino yung mas mababa ang value, siya yung behind. This is for the plus. Okay? So meaning, Tokyo is 1 hour ahead of Manila. Manila is 1 hour behind Tokyo. Okay? Compute nga po natin tong second example, the time difference between Manila and Dubai. Manila is GMT plus 8. So GMT plus 4. Ano po kaya ang time difference nito? Okay? Can you guys share your answer on our chat box? Let's see. 4. Great. So 8 minus 4. So that's right. So again, how do we determine sinong ahead, sinong behind? Kung sino mataas, siya ahead. Sinong mababa, siya behind. Meaning, Manila is 4 hours ahead of Dubai. Dubai is 4 hours behind Manila. Okay, 4 hours, right? Or next, the time difference between Lima and Seattle. So, same side pa din sila, but they are on the minus side. So again, the rule here is pagparehas, we will subtract the value. So, Lima is GMT minus 5. GMT minus 7. So, that is 2 hours. Now, on the other side, ito sa minus side, iba naman ang pag natin kung sino ang ahead, sino ang behind. Okay, sa minus side, kung sino yung mababa ang value, siya ang ahead. Kung sino ang mataas ang value, siya ang behind. Okay? So, in this example, Lima is 2 hours behind Seattle. And Seattle is 2 hours behind Lima. Okay? So, tignan nga po natin. Yan. Uh, compute nga po natin itong second example natin. Honolulu is a GMT minus 10. Honolulu is GMT minus 4. Ano po kaya ang time difference nitong dalawa? 6, right? Thank you sa mga sumasagot. It's 10 minus 4, so 6. So again, um, Toronto is 6 hours ahead of Honolulu, or Honolulu is 6 hours ahead, or behind, rather, Toronto. Now, the third one is that, ito na, dalawang city, they are located on either side of the prime region. So, Manila is GMT plus 8. New York is the minus side, GMT minus 4. So, again, ang rule natin, if they are located on either side of the region, we find. So, in this case, example number 1, it's 8 plus 4. So, time difference is 12 hours. Okay? Yeah, so... Um, so how will we determine dito kung sino ang ahead, sino ang behind? Kung sino po yung nasa positive side, side siya yung ahead. Kung sino yung nasa minus side, siya ang behind. Simple as that. Meaning, Manila is 12 hours ahead of New York. New York is 12 hours behind Manila. Okay? Next example natin. Ay, sinagot ko na. Uh, time difference between Bangkok and Atlanta is one hours because Bangkok is at plus 7, Atlanta is at minus 4, we will add the value that's 11 hours. Okay? So that's a time difference of Now, next, let's move on to currency. So, currency is the medium of exchange for goods and services. In short, it's the money, either paper or coins, issued usually by government and generally accepted as its face value as a method of payment. So, we have covering currencies that we might encounter that we might be encountering uh, during one of our travels. No? But I, I, I bet, for the most part, you know, the official currency or we, we just know it as a legal tender. Okay? So, legal tender... Oh. Sorry for that. Okay, when we say legal tender, it's the official currency. It's the nationally recognized currency of that particular country. Say, in the Philippines, our legal tender is Philippine Peso. So, it should be complete. No, you don't just say peso. Kasi may peso din sa Mexico. Okay? You don't just say dollars because there are a lot of dollars. So the legal tender, say, is United States dollars, Singaporean dollar, Hong Kong dollar. Okay. What about accepted? Currencies that are not legal tender, but they are accepted in most, no? Not all. In most of the businesses in that particular country. So ano-ano yung mga um, 
uh, commonly accepted currency, of course, uh, U.S. dollars. It's the most accepted uh, currency in the world. Okay, so uh, let's say in Cambodia, uh, you can use U.S. dollars in most of the uh, transactions. Even in mga street vendors, they accept a U.S. dollar. Same in Vietnam, some shops in Hanoi, okay, they are accepting uh, U.S. dollars as well, but kailangan lang um, crisp, kailangan tender, kailangan pa. Okay. Um, what, uh, how about uh, uh, pari, ay di muna. Dito, sa, sa taas natin, sa Hong Kong and Macau. Hong Kong dollar is accepted in Macau. Okay, however, the pataka of Macau is not accepted in uh, Hong Kong. Okay. Now, what about parity? Parity refers to the currencies that can be used interchangeably value or exchange. Now, we only have uh, one known par parity in the world, and that's between Brunei dollar and Singapore dollar. So, in our currency exchange, they are at about 35 pesos, almost 35, 36, almost the same. Ibig sabihin ng parity, you can use this uh, currency of one country to the other country because they have a formal agreement. Meaning, you can use Brunei dollar in Singapore, so use Singaporean dollar in Brunei. However, um, uh, the, the Singaporeans are not much educated about this parity. Okay? Kaya, madalas may mga businesses pa in Singapore that are not accepting Brunei dollars. However, in Brunei, they will inform. So, uh, for the most part, you can use the Singapore dollar in Brunei. Now, ano naman tong mga closed currency? When we say closed currencies, these are currencies that you cannot take out of the country. Okay? Nor you cannot test it outside of the country. Well, it's not strictly implemented, but no, but pero um, most of the time, big lang naging inspect sa airport, tinatang ay kang country pa, ay currency palabas. So most non-currency or closed currency includes those currencies from communist states or communist countries. India has a closed currency. Actually, Sri Lanka has a closed currency as well. No? When I went to Colombo, to Sri Lanka, I, I, I missed to research if they have a closed currency. So uh, late ko na nalaman na closed currency pala sila. Nakapaglabas na ako ng kanilang pera. Okay, luckily, Okay, I was not expected at the airport when I left in Sri Lanka. Now, so those are the most, these are the most traded currencies in the world. Of course, we have US dollars, the euro. Now, Japanese yen, while only one country uses yen, but it has a strong presence. Sterling, of course, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar as well. We have okay, renminbi or the yuan, China, Hong Kong dollar, and of course, New Zealand dollar. Most traded, ibig sabihin, whatever, whichever country you visit, you can find an, you can find a foreign exchange that can uh, deal with this type of currencies. Now, ito naman yung mga currency ng ASEAN. Okay, good to know as well. Okay. Yeah. So, quite familiar naman siguro tayo dito. Now, Lao is uh, Lao Kip and yung Mark is for this chat. So let's also give some currency tips and tricks to our travelers when they are going, whenever they go out of the country. You know, as to whenever possible, they use local currency. Mas marami pa rin kasi ma access when you use local currency. No? Kasi among mga small businesses, they only deal with local currency. Yung mga street vendors, most of them are only dealing with local currency. Now, take time also to understand local currency. Kumbaga, after you after they exchange the money, they go, they, they they check in or they go to somewhere safe. They have to, to look up an insura ng 10, an ng 20, an insura ng 50. Para may iwasan na, na yung, yung, yung situation na habang bumibili, eh doon nila labitan isa-isa ang yung pera. So, takaw, uh, takaw, ano yun? Uh, snatcher of gold capital. Also, do not store all single wallet uh, in case of anything anything happens. Now, keep in hand US dollar as this is the most traded currency. No, um, wherever you go, you can find someone who can deal with US dollar. Then, Chris bills matters you know, for those countries that are accepting uh, accepting cash or currency other than their legal tender. They prefer Chris bills. Are the, mga bago -bago 
also familiarize with foreign exchange as to where is the best exchange. Then for closed currency, you spend remaining cash in your ports because uh, for closed currency, you cannot exchange that as well outside the country of origin. And worse is baka pahuli pa tayo for taking out a uh, closed currency outside. So, and tricks that you can share. Now, for the three letter codes naman, so these are codes defined in first by IATA used to designate many airports. Now, technically, these are used to designate airport alone, only. But over the time, kinagamit na rin natin ang IATA code to designate metropolitan areas around the world. Lalo na kung tayo, tayo lang ang nag-usap, no? Okay, like I'm going to BKK, I'm going to SIN, I'm going to SGN, mga ganon. So, this is known as the Ayata Airport Code. So, predominantly, airport codes are named after the first three letters of the city. So, most, I, like SIN for uh, Changi International Airport, which is in Singapore, ATL for the Heart Hospital Jackson Planet International, and ISD for Stanford Airport. But, um, uh, airport codes can also be a combination of letters from the name of the city where it is located, like KUL for Kuala Lumpur International, HKJ for Hong Kong International, and the other examples. Now, in large metropolitan areas wherein um, there are two airports, no? so airports use the code for the city in one and uh, they assign another code to the other airport. Like when you Go to Bangkok, it's either you land in uh, BKK or BMK. So BKK is Suanapum, it's pronounced as Suanapum Airport, while BKK is Don Juan Airport or in national. Question Say you're going to Thailand and you're uh, flying with Air Asia. Sa ang airport ka kaya maglala? BKK or BMK? Share nga po your answer in the chat box. Right, you'll be landing in DMK. Okay, because uh, most uh, budget airlines are landing in DMK. However, uh, 5J is landing in DMK. Okay, so Beijing also has two airports, no? uh, PEK and PXK, Beijing Capital and Beijing Now, for Canada, uh, they use codes which bear little or no similarity at all with the conventional application. Now, if you're going to see, uh, most airports in Canada has Y on the beginning of the code. YVR for Vancouver, YYZ for Toronto, Pearson, and YT for Edmonton. Why is this the case? Uh, because um, most of the weather, uh, weather stations in Canada are co-located in the airport. Okay, so nilagyan nila ng Y to determine if, it's a, if there is a weather station in the airport. So Y stands for yes. Meaning, yes, there's a weather station in Barra International. So these are the most common codes that uh, that we encounter with reference to the busiest airport in the world. Topping the list is ATL or Plan International, followed by Beijing, PEK, LAX, DXB for Dubai, and HK. Okay. And the rest. Here, London Heathrow, Shanghai Pudong, Charles de Gaulle, and Dallas now, for Filipinos, the pandemic, no? for Filipinos going out of the country, these are the most common codes that we encounter. Either BKK or DMK, as I end for Singapore, of course, Hong Kong, airports in Japan, Hanita Narida, and others, Incheon in Korea, Taipei, L1, Dubai, of course, airports in Sydney, or in Australia, in Melbourne or Brisbane, and airports in Canada, and of course, LH, London, and East. So, ito yung mga madalas, puntahan ng mga Filipinos traveling for leisure outside the Philippines. Now, let's move on to the geographical features. When we say geographical features, these are naturally occurring features and also are result of human creation. So, itong mga geographical features, ito din yung mga nagsiserve as attractions in a particular destination. So, natural features include support the rivers, the hills, and the certain mountains. While man-made refers to the city, cities itself are attractions in their own right. Okay, buildings, roads, monuments, even dams. Okay, we've discussed a lot of dams that that's an interesting focus natin. For the Philippines, we have Magat Dam, Amgat Dam, Pantabangan Dam. Okay, we also have bridges. No? 
Okay, now let's move on. Let's talk about cultural geography. When we talk about cultural geography, naman, we are referring to the cultural aspects that can be found in a particular destination. May it be language, religion, cuisine, different economic and government structures, even art, music. So they all they all affect the the the, the whole travel experience. Okay, they can all give a holistic uh, tourism experience to somebody visiting a destination. So these are the most spoken languages in the world. Okay, um, we we not actually with, with native speakers. So the most commonly or the most spoken language in the world is Mandarin. So Mandarin is uh, just one of the five major languages of China. So it's spoken in Chinese mainland in Taiwan. So when you go to Hong Kong, Ibana, Hong Kong and Macau, they so use nila on Cantonese. Okay. Now, also, of course, English. English is the lingua franca or common language, also considered as official language for a lot of countries in the world. But for native speakers of English, of course, it's Australia, UK, USA, Canada, South Africa, Ireland, and New Zealand. Then we also have Spanish, which is official in 20 countries. Spanish is also wide spo widely spoken in the US. However, there are some sort of discrimination if you are a Spanish speaker in the United States. It's a reality that rights. Okay. Now in the Philippines, we also have a Spanish-based Creole actually in the Philippines. Okay. Would you know what, what uh, dialect is that? A Spanish-based Creole in the Philippines? Can somebody answer it in our chat box? It's um, spoken in Zamboanga City in some parts of Cavite. Yan, Chabacano. Kaya lang hindi na masyadong uh, sinasalita ang Chabacano sa Cavite, eh, some parts of Ternate. But there are a few speakers of Chabacano in Cavite. Of course, uh, other official language or most spoken languages in the world is Hindi, French as well. French is widely spoken because it's official siya in 29 countries. Actually, 20 countries in Africa are French speaking. Then, parts of Canada, you know, Quebec, Ontario are speaking in French. Then we have Arabic, the lingua franca in the Arab world. It's official in 22 states. However, there are a few variations from that. Then we have Bengali of Bangladesh and India. Portuguese also is uh, widely spoken. It's actually official in 10 countries. But the largest Portuguese speaking nation is Brazil. Now there is one nation in Southeast Asia that uses Portuguese as official language, and that is Timor Leste. So before turnover of Macau to China, gamit din sila na Portuguese. So if you can see signages in Macau, no, there are still Portuguese translation. Then also Russian language is widely spoken. Why? Because it was uh, widely spoken during the USSR period. No? So yung mga na, na hiwalay ng mga bansa, niretain nila yung paggamit na Russian language. Like uh, the Eastern Europe, Baltic States, Caucasus countries in Central Asia. And of course, the Indonesian language, because nga ang dami population of Indonesia, it's also my, spoken by minority in Timor Leste. But actually, the Indonesian language is a Malay language. Yeah, it's uh, the same as what is spoken in Malaysia, Brunei, and Singapore. Of course, the kakarap lang ng konting uh, derivatives or uh, changes okay, from country to country. No, religion as well. Okay, why do we need to understand as well or to know the religion of a particular country? Okay, we, we need to advise our clients as well because religion greatly influences the culture of a destination. Okay. Now, being informed of the religion, you know, we can be informed of the cultural practice and this will help our travelers to behave accordingly so they can enjoy their trips na hindi sila nagja-judge, hindi sila na look down or hindi disrupted. So generally naman, we should always respect, we should always tell our clients, we should always respect um, places of re uh, our, uh, religious practices that are taking place whenever they are there. Like they always respect a religious dwelling, a church, a mosque, or a synagogue for that matter. And they must dress accordingly. No? So uh, most naman, let's say Christianity, I am. So these are the uh, top religions in the world, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Judaism. No? So when you're visiting a Christian nation, we may we may think that Christian naman yan, very westernized, very lax. But no, 
No? Countries in America, in Africa, they take Christianity seriously. Like uh, in the case of um, LGBTs, no? when you are traveling to certain uh, Christian countries, no? you, 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 you may want to research if uh, sex couples or same-sex couples are generally accepted. Because some countries in South America and Africa, they, it's not accepted. They criminalize homosexuality. Okay. Punishable but by death, worse. So, yun. Now, for uh, visiting a, a predominantly Muslim nation, you must dress modestly. You don't show too much public affection. You may want to consider uh, drinking liquor as well. And for uh, visiting a country's uh, observing Hinduism or Buddhism, of course, observe as well uh, modesty. Pag, pag uh, sa, sa Hindu countries naman, you cannot just point to somebody else using your hands, using your feet, no? Because there are some, there are rulings, particularly yung feet, they consider it unclean. So, it's offending kapag tinuro mo ang somebody else who's in your feet. So, yun yung mga primary considerations, why we need to know religions, okay? Now, let's talk about the most popular cuisines naman in the world, okay? Because we are also catering for uh, foodie traveler. And food is really an integral part whenever you travel. You don't just eat for for your physical need of your body, no. But you also eat because you want to experience as well the lives, the culture in that destination. Sabi nga, the best way to understand a culture is to serve it in a platter. Yeah. So these are the most popular cuisines. We have Italian, French, Chinese, Indian, Spanish, Thai, of course, Japanese, Turkish, Malay, and Mexican. So, uh, some known Italian cuisines that must not be missed, of course, when you're visiting Italian or Italy are pasta, so we have also pizza, of course, and prosciutto and others. Now, for French, okay, the croque monsieur, crepes is uh, white meat in, Fre in France in, or French uh, colonized countries, Fo foie gras. Chinese, of course, we're, we're quite familiar with Chinese cuisine as it it has taken, they have taken the world by storm. Okay, basta by Chinatown, my Chinese cuisine. Basta my Chinese. We have roasted duck, braised pork, mga dim sums, the more popular ones. Also Indian cuisine. Okay, their biryani, okay, uh, roti, samosa, the most common uh, dishes of India. So, Spanish naman, for those countries with Spanish uh, inspiration culture, Spanish inspired culture. They have paella, of course, jamon, is quite famous, popular, and sangria. If Italy is for wine, then when you're in Spain, it's sangria. Of course, the Thai dishes are quite popular as well. So if you've been to Southeast Asia or if you've been to Thailand, probably you've tasted the tom yum already. So, nagiging part din ng pop culture ano, at ang mga dishes that whenever you go to a particular destination, kailangan matikman ko itong dishes. Ito. Because uh, this is what have been spoken in social media, this is what my friends told me, taste. Okay. Thai, somtam, or the papaya salad, tawagin. And of course, they're what they consider as their national dessert, the mango sticky rice. Of course, Japanese is also... Uh, uh, the, the Japanese cuisine has also taken over by storm. We have the sushi, which is known to any parts of the world. Of course, the ramen and the best beef in the world, the wild beef. When you go to Turkey, Australia, these are the most common. Uh, itong simit is widely seen in the streets of Turkey, the pretzel, the standard. Okay, of course, the menu, men, which is a breakfast uh, thing, kebab, sama mo na shawarma. Okay, Malay cuisine. Okay, Malay cuisine is not exclusive to Malaysia. Um, Malay culture is widespread in Indonesia, Singapore, and Brunei. So most likely, itong mga ito makikita mo din in, in those four states, or sovereign states. Uh, si Lema, Kaya Toast, uh, best paired with Te Tarik. So common breakfast to sa Malay states. Singapore, lalo. So common na sinaserve ng Te Tarik. Mexican, Mexican is just like a Mex just like Spanish dishes that ever uh, the Mexican chapter part a little spicier than Mexican. Tamales, tacos, gazadillas. So let's talk about uh, destination and structures. Ito na, let's differentiate. Okay, kasi sabi ko nga kanina, most of the time we use destination and attractions in traditions. 
the destination refers to larger areas that includes a uh, group of attractions together. So that's destination. So, pwede isang country or isang city. We refer it as destination. Whereas, attractions are single units, individual sites. Okay, let's say, um, um, what do you call this? Eiffel Tower. So, Eiffel Tower is an attraction. Paris is a destination. Or France is the destination. Okay? So, again, destination is a larger unit. Attraction is a single unit. So, attractions can be natural, can be cultural, can be a special events, entertainment also, and man-made. So, those, when we say man-made, these are stuff that are not built, purpose-built for tourism. Say, roads, bridges. Hindi uh, naman talaga siya ginawa as a tourist attraction, but over time, because of its significance in that area, naging attraction. So, natural attractions include landscape. Seascape, parks, mountains, yung mga natural geographical features natin na binanggit ko. Coast, islands. Okay? The Philippines itself as an archipelago can be considered as a natural attraction in buong bansa. Cultural refers to historical sites, cuisines, architecture, monuments, also museums, special events, festivals, religious events, sports events, even trade shows. Say ITB in Berlin, ITB in Singapore, yung mga World Travel Mart. Those are special events. Entertainment attractions. So theme parks, amusement, casinos, shopping malls, the even theaters, and even sports complex can be, or complexes can be an attractions. Apart from the sport events happening inside the, the, the Coliseum, the stadium itself, and the attraction, like the Bird's Nest in Beijing. No, yung ginamit noong 2008 Olympics. Man-made attractions, highways, buildings, um, industrial sites, dams, bridges, and towers. Okay? So let's have a run through of top destinations in the world. So topping the list is Paris, France. Okay? And most, um, or most important attractions include, of course, Louvre Museum, the Notre Dame Cathedral, the Arc of Triumph. Brian, rather. Okay. Then following uh, France is or Paris is Bangkok in Thailand. So Bangkok is uh, visited for its hustle and bustle, nightlife, street foods. So our most frequented ones, our most notable ones, the Grand Palace. We visit, with visiting Grand Palace, we must observe certain modesty here. Okay, the Wat Po, or the, the Temple of the Reclining Buddha, and Wat Arun. Okay, you can have the best view of what Arun across the Chao Phraya River. But of course, it's still nice to be uh, up close with what Arun it can be up close naman, but the best view comes from across the Chao Phraya River. Then, of course, we have London in the United Kingdom. The one you see on screen right now is the, uh, the Big Ben. Then we also have the Buckingham Palace, Tower Bridge, and the London Siyempre, may, meron din naman tayong Moa Eye. Pero siyempre, iba pa din yung feels when you see the actual <coughs> Then, Dubai in United Arab Emirates is fourth on our list. Okay, with, with uh, Burj Al Arab on a photo. Then, other notable attractions into the Bastakia, the Sheikh Said Al Maktoum House. Then, the Jumeirah Mosque. Okay, so, oh, I hope uh, you have registered already to our Emirates product update because yesterday I was just informed that Dubai Tourism will be joined by the, the, the counterpart of the Department of Tourism in Dubai. So originally it will just be Emirates, but we decided decide to join. So it will be a great chance to hear the tourism situation in Dubai. Yeah. So uh, another top destination is Singapore, of course, the, the whole of Singapore. Uh, then we uh, most notable was Shampre Universal Studios. We have the Marina Bay Sands. Dito pa lang, ang dati mo nang makikita. You can spend the whole day in Marina Bay Sands. Ilalo na kung hindi ka naman talaga ma-walk. You're just merely on a sightseeing. Hawker centers. Parang food park. Kumbaga, dito sa Manila. But uh, comparing to, to the, these uh, food cultures, no? sa food park kasi natin dito sa Manila, you cannot really see authenticity of Filipino dishes of the park because there's a lot of things happening in a food park natin. 
Pero sa Hawker Center ng Singapore, you can really see the authenticity of dishes there. But you can say that these are Singaporean dishes. These are Malay dishes. Now, top destinations as well is Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. What you can see in the screen, screen right now is the Kermis Tower. Okay, there's also this great vertical square. The, the, the architecture here is really awesome. It's just breathtaking. Then the KL Tower, which you can go on top, so you can have a nice view of the city. Then on the outskirts of Kuala Lumpur, the Bat Caves, of course, uh, you can climb up that stairs and you can get inside the caves and see the wonders inside the cave. Okay, top destination din natin, New York and United States, the city itself. Um, apart from the attractions in New York, the city itself is already a destination. Kumbaga, makaapa ka lang ng New York, it's already a, you can already say it's a tourism. Okay, so notable attractions in Europe, in, in uh, New York rather includes, of course, the famous statue of Liberty. Then, there you go, Empire State Building as well, the Central Park in New York, the Rockefeller Center as well in New York is inspired. Okay, may the observation, the Rockefeller observation. Then we have Istanbul, uh, Turkey, in Turkey, the okay, top destinations or most of the ones is the uh, Hagia Sophia, okay, the top Palace as well, Blue Mosque, it's quite impressive here in the Basilica system. Oh, we also have a we have a line scheduled uh, update with Turkish for next in Turkey this November. Then Tokyo, and notable ones include the Meiji Shrine, Tokyo Sky Tree, Imperial Palace, and of course last one this is so South Africa. So kung mapapansin yung listahan natin na madami Asian cities na nasa mga destinations, okay, which means we are our area is really competitive in terms of travel and tourism but uh, we just hope that someday Philippines will be included in this so these are the most notable ones South Korea particularly village new house presidential house and Yongbokgong Palace okay top attractions naman yung mga specific attractions so ano ano naman sila of course it includes uh, top of the list Eiffel Tower in Paris, then Agency Great Wall of China, which is uh, not just amazing or breathtaking when it comes to the view, but it's also historical. The Red Square in, uh, San Kaya ito? Can somebody share and answer in our chat box? San natin makikita ang Red Square? Russia! Lagi siyang nagmamadali. Russia. Or ni Wale. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Leaning Tower. <laughs> Okay, um, then we also have the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Okay. Then the Great Pyramid of Giza. Top attraction din yan. So most of the trap at, at top attractions natin yung mga nasa wonders. Then, okay, then we have the Sydney Opera House. Uh, first, the Statue of Liberty of New York, which we showed earlier. Then Taj Mahal in India. Okay, so. Um, it's it's quite far from this from the capital from New Delhi, but it's worth the visit. Of course, Machu Picchu in where is this? Singapore, saan ito? Can someone answer in the chat box? May nakarating na ng South America kanina at saan natin sa Peru. Okay, Stonehenge, of course, a okay. Now, um, let me share to you a simple checklist that you can follow whenever, siguro pag nag-resume na tayo, mag-start na ulit tayo, no? a simple checklist that you can uh, follow to give advice to your clients. So, dahil nyo na yung destination, as to the location, the time zone, okay, weather then sabi na, mag-advise tayo ng weather. Kung baga, ito ay ano na natin extra mile natin so that we can deliver an excellent service. The currency, exchange rate, mention your language, mention your religion, cuisine as well, ano yung mga dapat yung matikman na hindi niya miss out, so, mag-mention na din tayo ng important at local laws and regulations as well as customs. So, para walang hassle, so they can behave properly. Health issues as well, will they be needing 
a test, will they be needing a vaccination? Sabihin din natin, ito ang hindi madalas sinasabi, voltage and flux. Kumbaga, sariling sikap na lang si client na naaralin kung ano yung voltage and flux. Transportation, ano, ano yung expectations of transport? Internet din. Um, also, attractions. Uh, let's, kung package naman yun, walang problema kasi nakalign up yung itinerary. Okay? Documents as well, we advise them as their passport, okay, visa, travel insurance, vaccination certificate, medical document that they need to have a hard and a soft copy of those documents. Ito hindi madalas sinasama sa travel advice, nearest embassy or consulate. Okay, I don't know. But I think it's an integral part as well to mention to your clients kung saan located o kung may embassy ng mga nila. We don't know what's gonna happen, di ba? But at least if they have an idea where the nearest embassy or consulate is, they, 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 they can be, they can have at least little security na whatever happens, meron silang mapagpuntahan. They know where to go. Okay? Then also, what to pack? Kumbaga kasi as travel agent, iniisip natin personal na kasi itong kung anong ipapak nila eh. Bakit ko pa i-advise? No? Iba din po kasi eh, na since kayo ang nakakaalam ng destination, uh, might be napuntahan nyo yung destination. So alam nyo kung ano yung, kung dapat, ano yung dapat madalhin, ano yung dapat isuport. Clothes, toiletries, no? vitamins, medications, glasses, gears, mga digital devices accessories. As simple as running down this to them can give an impression for your clients that you really cared to them. Sabihin na natin, di kahon na o kaya scripted na lang yung mga advice checklist na to. But this somehow will give a sense of security to them that you are really taking care of your travel and their what, whatever they're gonna do outside their travel advice checklist. So let's just have a quick view of the Philippines. Kasi kung naka-attend naman na kayo sa mga destination focus natin, might be, nakita nyo na yung iba. Okay? So, Philippines is an archipelago comprised of 7,641 islands. Updated na tayo. Ano po? Baka 7,107 pa din tayo. It's already 7,641. So, we are the world's fifth largest island. Country. Okay, but we are the second largest archipelago next to Indonesia. So we are divided, of course, into three island groups. That's the one Visayas Mindanao. We're in Southeast Asia, in the tropical zone, and we are in GMP plus eight. So, so in terms of our administrative geography, we are divided into 17 regions. Okay. So, ito yung sinusundan natin sa destination focus series natin. Then we have 81 provinces, 146 cities, close to 1,500 municipalities, and roughly 42,000. So here are the regions of the Philippines. We have CR, CAR, of course, Ilocos, Region 1. Then Region 2, Cagayan Valley, Region 3, Central Zone. Region 4A is Calabar Zone, Maroko, 4B, and the Duke Region 5. For the Visayas, tatlo lang sila do. Region 6 is Western Visayas, nasa ang doon ng Palawa, ang Buraka, and other region. Oops, there is a typo error. This is Region 7. Region 7 is Central Visayas, Region 8 is Eastern Visayas, Samar, Leyte, Paclobos. Then Mindanao has 6, Region 9 is the Buanga Peninsula, okay, Del Norte, Del Sur, Sibugay, Samarca City, and the city of uh, Isabel and Basil. It's part of the Buanga Peninsula. Region 10, Northern Mindanao, then Region 11 is the Bau, no, Norte, Del Sur, and so on. Then Region 12 is Soxargen, South of Tabato, Jensan. Region Silang. Then Region 13 is Caraga, Surigaos. Then the Barn, of course, the Ibang Samon, or formerly the AR. Okay. So those are the regions of the Philippines. For our Filipino travelers, this is prior, this is a listing prior to the pandemic. Most likely this will be one. Okay, these are the most common three letter codes that we encounter for domestic travelers. Manila, of course, Cebu, Davao. Kalibo, Ido, Cagayan, PPS, Puerto Princess, Bacolod, Tacloban, and Zamo. Okay, let's see that. Um, yeah, so what uh, the Philippines has to offer in terms of tourism, of course, uh, the, the, the best part of our country as an archipelago is that we have great island activities in the country. We have pristine beaches, okay, from gray sands to 
white sands and pink sands. We have colorful festivals, although we may not be seeing a, a grand celebration of festivals in the coming years because of the limitations. We have delectable cuisine uh, in incredible underwater spots. We do have a lot of spots here for diving, may it be uh, marine creatures or wreck diving. Of course, we have a lot of waterfalls, amazing mountains, but this, of course, is kind of limiting because not everyone can hike and can uh, climb a mountain. Then the rich history and heritage, okay, not only in vegan but also of the country. Okay, we have a lot of stuff uh, related to the heritage that we can offer. The waves, we have great wave uh, serving spots from La Union, Aurora, and Surgao. Even other island uh, provinces already have serving spots. <coughs> we na po promote stream adventures, caves. We have a lot of that in the country. River cruises. Okay, we are just. Uh, we are just bound with um, Puerto Princesa underground, but there are other underground rivers as well and um, nice rivers in the country. National parks like Hundred Islands, okay, we do have a lot of national parks as well. Pilgrimage, the whole archipelago is dotted with Spanish inspired churches, mga 18th century churches that are that's just uh, a destination for Catholics or for pilgrims, but also to other uh, tourists that. Uh, just go there to admire the architectural st structures of these churches. Of course, museums and just spots for sightseeing. Okay, so uh, this is the last part of the top destinations in the Philippines for 2019. Okay, we have um, this list is uh, kasi baka magtaka kayo um, as to the arrangement. Ano? But uh, the basis of this list is on the number of overnighters. Yung nag stay ng uh, two days a night, uh, minimum, and onwards, okay? So we have Cebu, that includes the province of Cebu, the city of Cebu, and other highly urbanized city in that area. So that's top of the list. Then Rizal province, also in the list. Davao del Sur, okay, where Davao city is geographically located. Of course, Aklan is the top destination then, where Boracay is located. Then Batangas, okay? You might be wondering, no, why is the top destination ang Batangas? Because the yeah, majority of those travelers going to uh, Region 4A are from Metro Manila, and bulk of domestics are in Metro Manila as well. And being Batangas is very much close to Manila, so those travelers coming from Visayas and Mindanao who are bound to go to Region 1, CAR, Region 3, or those going to Region 4 as well are, are dropping by to Batangas. Then we have Zambales, Palawan, of course, <coughs> and Albay, also Binguet, or including the city of Baguio, and Davao de Oro, or the formerly de Compostela Valley. Okay? So for the top attractions, naman, there's a long list here, but anyway, I can, I, I'll give the presentation naman to you. So you can have a run through of the top attractions. So you can use this one as uh, somehow as a basis in doing your marketing, okay, your, uh, your enticing your agents, you know, reminding them that these destinations are are your top of the mind here in the Philippines. All right. So uh, that ends our session this morning for our destination geography. Okay. So po meron po tayong questions. So Probably you can just drop your question in the chat box. Pero kung wala na po, yung, um, bibigay na po namin yung mga forms for you guys to fill up. Okay? So kung wala na po tayong tanong, again, reminder, do not forget to sign up the attendance form and please also fill up our evaluation form. I drop po namin yung link sa ating chat box. Yeah, so nandiyan na po uh, evaluation and uh, the attendance form kung hindi nyo pa po siya na fill up. Okay, so fill that up and I will use that list as a basis for sending out the first the certificate of attendance and a copy of presentation natin this morning. Yan, okay, so maraming maraming salamat po again for joining us uh, in this session of Bio webinar for destination geography. Okay, we hope that you learn uh, things this morning and you can use these learnings in uh, making yourselves prepared for the resumption.
leisure travel in the coming uh, months. Again, maraming maraming salamat po. Magandang umaga and have a good day everyone. Thank you.